Hi, my name is Yusra Aver. It's my pleasure to present our work, Android Smart TV's Vulnerability Discovery Vialog Guided Fuzzing. This is a joint work between the University of Waterloo, Renmin University of China, Purdue University, and UC Riverside. Before diving into the details of our technique, let me start by motivating our work. Why is Smart TV security important? Well, Smart TVs are the most widely adopted home-based IoT devices. They account for the largest market share. The great success, of course, does not come with no risks. Attackers can exploit physical channels as well as traditional cyber channels to achieve various damages, which could be manifested in both cyber and physical harm. To proactively address this attack model, we perform in this study an evaluation of Android Smart TV security. Our evaluation particularly targets customization aspects that are performed by Smart TV vendors. To facilitate discussion, I'll first cover a brief background. Android Smart TVs typically run a heavily customized version of AOSB with additional hardware and system components. The custom functionality is usually implemented by customizing Android system services, and the functionality is exposed to framework developers via dedicated APIs. The APIs allow triggering and managing different Smart TV functionalities, including those related to physical aspects, such as display and audio control, as well as those related to uh, uh, cyber aspects, such as remote control management and file management. We note that these APIs execute in the context of highly privileged processes. So obviously, any improper protection can be exploited to achieve various damages. Consider the following example. Xiaomi Mi Box introduces a new native API called the System Control Sit Position. It allows to set up the display at a position XY with size WH. We found that the API does not enforce any access control, implying that any app can mess up the display under specific parameters. For the figure on the right shows how the display is corrupt after invoking the API with the highlighted parameters. In such scenario, users would resort to rebooting the device to fix the problem. However, it turns out that these parameters are persistent across reboots, making it impossible to fix the problem without a hard reset. With the smart TV ransomware already in the wild, we envision that such APIs could be exploited to mount DOS attacks. In this study, we develop a specialized analysis framework to uncover such hidden flaws. Now, adopting bycode, Java bytecode static analysis may sound compelling for this purpose. However, it turned out that this is infeasible because vendor edition are implemented in C++ and or in Java. So dynamic analysis or testing is more applicable here, but the direct adoption is challenging. For example, simply relying on the internal states of the system to assess a physical execution output might not be sufficient because the audio and visual behavior is decoupled from the internal state. To address these limitations, we propose a new fuzz testing approach. Our approach is composed of the four components, a fuzzing target locator, a dynamic fuzzer, an input generator, and a monitoring system. Given a target smart TV ROM, the fuzzing target locator would analyze the system services and identifies APIs to be fed to the fuzzer. We know that these APIs include Java APIs as well as native APIs. Then the dynamic fuzzer would generate test cases for each target API initially with random inputs. Our system features a novel input generation module to facilitate smart fuzzing. Specifically, the input generator would leverage the dumped execution logs to spot potential input validation messages. It then accordingly infers valid input specification and feeds it back to the dynamic fuzzer. As such, it could drive the fuzzer towards exploring code regions that are guarded by these validation messages. This closed log-guided fuzzing loop is carried out until no newer inputs can be recovered from the logs. The monitoring system would analyze the execution output to uncover potential vulnerabilities. Specifically, to detect physical anomalies, we redirect the execution HDMI output to the system via an HDMI capture device. The monitor would capture and compare the display and the audio signals before and after each test case. It then output alerts if discrepancies are detected. Now we will explain details about the fuzzing target 
locator. This component recovers APIs at the Java native layers. Here we dive into the details of how APIs can be invoked via the binder IPC mechanism. To implement a system service, framework developers define its interface and, as an EADL description. A client app can invoke an API, say method A, via binder transactions. Specifically, the client proxy would marshal the parameters and maps the method call to a raw transaction ID and initiates the transaction call. The stop on the server site would unmarshal the data and call the actual server implementation. It also marshals replies, if any. While the process of identifying Java-level APIs is straightforward, identifying native APIs is more challenging because the binaries are largely stripped. To solve the problem, we perform a lightweight binary analysis. Specifically, we uh, recover the transaction IDs, the argument types, and order from the native binaries. Essentially, we're replicating the client proxy transactions to invoke the target API. Generating valid input specs via log analysis is challenging. Consider the following messages that were dumped while executing a target API. The red messages indicate that the input is rejected because two argument values are larger than 16. Such information is clearly valuable and can be used by the fuzzer to generate smarter inputs. Now, these messages further depict a few challenges. First, deriving messages that are uniquely triggered by a target execution is challenging because other messages are being dumped concurrently by other processes. Second, the rejection does not correspond to a standard exception, but rather it is in free text form. We address these challenges through a synergy of different techniques. We use a statistical methodology to identify target logs that are uniquely triggered by an API. And to recognize input validations, we devise a deep learning approach. Our proposed method leverages the observation that a large number of logging statements can be statically extracted from the bytecode of Android ROMs. Through string and static taint analysis, we can extract these messages and determine if they are input validation related. We could then leverage that to check whether a message dumped by a native layer is input validation message. Specifically, we start by analyzing the bytecode of a large corpus of Android ROMs and look for Java level input validation checks. Here we're showing two examples. We then look for potential login statements that are guarded by these checks. As we see here, we can identify two instances of input validation messages. And we can also identify one instance of a non-input validation message. We accordingly label each message with its uh, corresponding label. We use these automatically labeled messages to train a set of classifiers, which can be used to predict the class of a target lock message. Here, we elaborate on how the dynamic fuzzer proceeds under the guidance of the log output. We use the native API ABC to walk you through the procedure. As shown, the API takes three arguments. In the first fuzzing iteration, the fuzzer uh, starts without any input specification. It invokes the API with random inputs. The resulting log is analyzed to identify target logs, which are highlighted in green here. And then they are further analyzed to recognize input validation and potential specifications. As we see here, one input validation is identify reflecting a range check. Note here that we cannot infer to which parameter X refers to. The fuzzer speculate that X is the first parameter, so it thus generates a value 10 within this range without changing the second and third arguments. The resulting log messages are further um, uh, disclosing a new input validation here, indicating a parameter equality check. So X and Y should be the same. The fuzzer then concludes that the first speculation is correct X is the first parameter. Now it speculates that Y refers to the second parameter, so it sets it to be 10. The resulting log message did not yield to any input validation. At this stage, the fuzzer will start a random mutation. Now to detect potential anomalies triggered by a, te by a test case, the fuzzer leverages two channels. First, it inspects the execution log to spot indications of cyber anomalies. Second, it relies on the external uh, monitor to, to capture physical changes. Specifically, we launch a media player to play uh, visual and audio content before and after the te each test execution. And then we redirect the signals 
by an HDMI capture to the observer comparison. The signals are compared using image and audio comparison algorithms, and if there are any discrepancies, alerts will be uh, outputted. We run our log-guided fuzzing on 11 Android TV boxes. We discovered 37 flows, including 11 cyber attacks, 16 physical disturbances, and 10 memory corruptions. The table here shows the uh, discovered cyber attacks. The highlighted column report the APIs that triggered at least one useful input validation, which we have leveraged to discover the vulnerable path. Here we report the physical disturbances that were discovered by the fuzzer. The fuzzer detected a wide range of visual and auditory anomalies, allowing unprivileged applications to drop off the HDMI signals, to black out the display, to rescale, and to fully manipulate the color aspect. Others enable to control the audio signals as well. These anomalies can be exploited to achieve various damages. For example, they can be used to put the smart TV into a fake-off mode, and they can even be used to stiltly affect the viewer's health, specifically the visual's health through manipulating color aspects. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to take any questions.